So one of the things that's quite clear from studying Chinese state media and diplomats online um, is that they're eager to promote sort of sympathetic Western voices um, that promote, you know, pro-Beijing positions. It's a loophole and it's a way around uh, escaping that state-affiliated label. Now, if you look at very specific people like Li Jingjing, for instance, she is a fixer. She's She organizes and goes on these trips with the foreign shills in order to translate for them, uh, introduce them to the local party uh, heads or whoever they have to talk to, you know, goes with them to Xinjiang and things like that. She's a perfect example because if you look at her personal channel, JJ on the road, what you see is the majority of it is actually just carbon copies from her CGTN site. Not only is it incentivized because they're going to get shared out and signal boosted by state media or the Chinese government, but also it's really the only way that you can operate. So you're not going to be able to go and do what Winston and I were doing. You're not going to be able to go around, ride on motorcycles or do whatever you want around to uh, rural China and go have conversations with people unless you have state minders with you directing the narrative and telling you exactly where you can and can't go. Uh, we were contacted, you know, continually contacted even after we left China to uh, do some of this paid propaganda. It's not just let's go film the beaches and say how wonderful the, the poverty alleviation is in this area. But once they are proven to be a useful asset, then they can get fed even bigger propaganda pieces to do. And they get paid to do it as well, just like we were offered to be paid $2,000 to say that COVID came from white-tailed deer in America. When the whole Xinjiang issue started to ramp up in the international press, especially around the whole cotton and forced labor uh, type situation, we knew that they would employ this army of shills and they would send them out there to run damage control and defense and deflection. And they did. All the same players and the same characters that you've seen pop up on the Ai Chongqing trip and all on CGTN, etc. they all ended up in Xinjiang, doing the exact same thing, walking around the Grand Bazaar and these couple of tourist spots to say, look, there's no genocide here. There's no forced labor. Everything's great. We, both Winston and I, just asked for more transparency from the platforms that we have, mm -hmm. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Just be honest with the fact that we are dealing with the large scale propaganda coming from state enterprises masquerading itself as organic material, organic video material. And we, we want that properly labeled. Generally, I think labeling is a smart approach because it really helps to, you know, restore context for users. So they understand um, the potential biases that are inherent in the information they're encountering. And at the same time, it doesn't require platforms to ban content or to sort of take it down, which I think one of the things that we're trying to do is to maintain and keep safe an open and vibrant pluralistic information environment.